Hello and welcome to that Eurovision site, Eurovision with a slice of life. My name is Jazzy, my pronouns are she, her, and I am doing well today and joining me is... Hi, it's Yannick. I use any pronouns and I'm excited to be here. Today, me and Yannick are going to discuss the Latvian Eurovision 2023 selection, Supernova. The winners were Sudden Lights with their song, Aya. Like they won both the jury and the tally vote in the selection. Patricia came second with her song Rush. I guess my first question would have to be, what are your thoughts on Sudden Lights winning Supernova 2023? Everyone who, who, who knows me knows that I, I, I've been studying the song since the, the, it came out. Like the, literally when the playlist uh, was uh, released, I immediately, I fell in love with Aya. I, for a long time, I thought I was the only person who was in love uh, with the song. But later, I, I realized that a lot of people are uh, the mutual so on Twitter. also really love it. Like uh, on the test team, suddenly I, I realized like five other people on, on our team also loves Aya. And uh, and <laughs> and also my, my European friends have been studying Aya as well. Which which was probably my fault because I was spamming them uh, the links to, to listen to Aya all the time, and this is my favorite song of the of the selection. Not only for Latvia, but it is it's probably my favorite song of the season so far, and it will be hard to top because uh, I I have no idea why the song is my favorite. Uh, I am. Um, like the indie rock sa- sound isn't like always my 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 my, my favorite uh, sound for 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 songs, but I uh, it was just amazing. I I love it. And the live performance was just spot on. I thought this was ready for for, for Eurovision. Like every single moment of the staging was ready, and uh, I am so happy that they won. Uh, and overall, I'm happy that Latvian supported uh, as well, uh, because it's been five years since the win in the national final and. As much as I love Lara and uh, Funny Girl, just fine. It was so, so good. And I am happy that they got the revenge and got uh, one, uh, one this year. And I am so excited to see them in Liverpool. Maybe at some pre parties as well. Maybe the Polish one, please. <laughs> So for me, I am very happy that this one, um, it has like a darkness, but then it has this like haunting ending when they're singing in Latvian and at the end, it's like they are singing a lullaby. And that is obviously the, that is obviously the translation of the song, Aya is translated to lullaby. And it just feels like that. And it's just so beautiful. There's just something that's like, that's so cool about this song, but yet so beautiful. And I just love it. It's all, like and the staging was kind of dark, but also had that but this warmth about it as well. Like there's just so much like about this. And one thing I really hope they do for Eurovision is they just keep the staging exactly the same. They don't need to change anything. They don't need to do anything fancy. This works as it is. Just copy and paste this over from the national final, please. Um, this is my second at the moment in Eurovision. But I think if you know me, nothing's gonna be. Queen of Kings. No, nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> um, this uh, it just visually and song wise just really stands out to me and it just stands out really well. And I think actually this takes us on quite nicely to the second thing that I just want to like explore. How well can Sudden Lights do at Eurovision? Can they break this non-qualification streak that they've had going on since 2016? Because I really hope so. <laughs> so when the uh Allocation for semi finals came out, and uh, a lot of people said that seven one is the strong, strong one, stronger one. But looking at the songs that, that are out like right now, I feel like it's very uh, much equal uh, with the with the level. I think uh, there aren't like big contenders so far in seven one. Man of Czechia, uh, for me as well, I think Czechia is a strong contender. Uh, Finland is. Probably going to to be a contender as well, but I feel like every everything has equal chance compared to like previous years summer finals. I really hope that they qualify, and I, in my opinion, this has uh, an audience, and I, I am going to say that they are qualifying, probably qualifying, and I 
I, I don't want to say everything is because uh, I can't predict uh, it now because we only have like 15 songs. So that's that's also something. I don't even know how 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 people will vote uh, because it's it's one hundred percent all votes and uh, it's hard because in my opinion Aya has uh, has a uh, has an audience and the audience will really love Aya uh, and overall I think people are overreacting about them winning because I like you wanted other songs to win but I feel like Aya is your 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 best choice to doing well uh, knowing the what the packages were at Supernova, like Aya was the only song at the Foda okay, that he was perfect vocally and the staging doesn't really have to be changed. Uh like there's just something about this song. Like being the the part that's very rocky rock uh, sounding being English and suddenly the last part being very uh bringing that and very very being very emotional so I think this has the potential to win, uh, to win, uh, qualify. <laughs> I don't think it's winning Eurovision, but I think it's qualifying. Uh, but as I said, th- there is just something about entries with uh, song titles that are I- in uh, translatable to our to English to, to English, like Sada da Sada last year, uh, and I feel like this has a similar charm, and I think this is very underrated by the Euro fans, and I really hope they do well because they have everything ready they need to just need to perform at in May. I totally agree with the comparison to Sadade Sadade in that it has that emotional edge and there are little bits in the national language but it's also mainly is in English but they like take us back to their roots so I do agree with the comparison to Sadade Sadade and that it will form that emotional connection with the audience. Um, I, I personally think this can break the non-qualification streak that Latvia have going on I think, I think as I've already said, if they keep the stage in the same as they did at Supernova, they should be fine. That state because everything that made the Supernova performance was what made this song stand out so well. Like there was nothing that was going to stand out over this at Supernova because the staging was just so good. Um, and I think this is the strong, the, the stronger semi at the moment. Um, I feel like some people are going to compare, the, are just instantly going to compare this to Wild Youth because it's two boy bands. I'm just going to say, preface this now, this is a much stronger, much more authentic song than We Are One is. The only issue where I think there could be an issue is if Kuma win UMK. Because um, they have that similar indie vibe and I'd be a bit like, mm, could this hurt it now? I don't know. Um but I personally think when when it comes to Wild Youth and, and Sunlights, the genres are still completely different. Like we are that like Wild Youth are this like anthemic pop rock song, while I feel like Sunlights are more indie rock. Um and I just think this will break Latvia's like, non-qualification streak. It's too good not to. And if it doesn't, it has been absolutely robbed. <laughs> um and I will be kicking off on Twitter. <laughs> So I guess my last point, because we have, I think this has been a little bit short, so I am going to go like over some of the other songs in Supernova, just a little bit. Um, what other songs from this selection did you enjoy? Uh, the other song that I really liked was uh, Fake Love by Raum. I thought uh, it was at the, 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 the final. I think he finished like seventh or something. Uh, so I think uh, that that was slow. Uh, looking at other songs that were in this selection, uh, I don't remember it was seventh, but I feel like it wasn't that high. Uh, it was all the other uh, st- st- strong songs I thought deserved to win. Hush, I I can see why people like it. I kind of enjoy it, but I have a problem with uh, with it being like the static wasn't that, that great. Uh, and I'm not a f- fan of the uh, singer as well uh, because of some stuff, but then I'm not going to dwell on it. When it comes to the non qualifiers, I really missed uh, Inspo in uh, in the final. Like I, she wasn't like vocally the best, but she, I felt Inspo deserved the the, the, the place in the final. Uh, other songs, I, I there were some weird songs in the final. Uh, that uh, I thought uh, 
there's one, one song that the, the girl was singing about that, that she was facing uh, the piano and uh, away from the audience. Uh, it was I thought the song itself was nice, but I thought the, the staging choice of being faced away is kind of weird. So I... Um, uh, Marcos Rivas song wasn't for me. I feel like he, if he ha- he wants to win Supernova, go to the version, he has to break his uh, uh, streak of songs being sim- similar to each other. Because uh, he has been in Supernova for years, and I, I, I kid you not, I can't remember any song he, he, he has uh, participated with. And that's not a good thing, especially if he, if it's your like eighth or ninth time being in, in this uh, selection. Uh, overall, I enjoyed Spanova, even though the songs weren't like the best quality, but I thought the show was really great. Uh, the host did an amazing job, even shutting out uh, the English uh, speakers. Uh, so that's also great. And there is one, one thing that will stay with me for a while is the uh, the, the, the totem uh sang a cappella by the participants. I thought that was really cute. I can't find a, vid- a single video of, of this uh, online. I don't know if uh, if, if the, the the LTV even uh, published it, but it was very nice. I want to I, I want to find 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 it and see something. Overall, it was a pleasant selection, but I feel like when it comes to Latvians, uh, the support for the line was too, too too big too for them to to compete with them because of how much support I got uh, from the Latvians, like sweeping uh, televotes in the semi-final and in the final. So, yeah, maybe we will see some of them uh, next year with maybe stronger songs and uh, we'll see. Um, I think for me, the song that really, really stood out to me is, again, Realm's Fake Love. It had that heavy rock sound, which I really, really like. And I think this would have also done okay at Eurovision because you, when Europe just seems to like that sound, like it always does well at Eurovision, it would have done quite well. Um, but I almost feel like it would have been the safe choice if they'd have sent him. So it'd been like, oh, we're just looking for a qualification because we're not qualified for years. Um, I don't think that's the way you need you should I don't know if that's the way you should be going about your selections. Um so I'm kind so I am glad that Summer Rights won. Another song I actually really liked was at least Hayama's Tricky. I just thought it was just a fun hip hop song. Um I just like that kind of music. She kind of reminded me of a mini Samantha Tina and I just really love that about the song. Um and I really love Samantha Tina's Eurovision attempt, so that was just the song that I liked. Um, also, I will say this: I really liked Abby's staging for her song. I thought it was like really emotional. I really liked the connection she had with her backing dancers. And um, on the stage, I felt like that performance just conveyed a lot of emotion. And I think I'm not surprised I did that did quite well, even though it wasn't initially a fan favorite going into the selection, um, because it, 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 it the staging was just really nice, and I really liked it. <laughs> So I guess that takes us to the end of this Supernova recap video. I would like to thank Yannick for joining me this evening. I would like to remind viewers, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, that Eurovision site, where we have more national final recaps and interviews coming up. Also be sure to give, give us a follow over at that Euro site on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to stay up to date with all the Eurovision 2023 news, as well as following us on that Eurovision podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, so you can be notified when a new episode comes out. You can also listen to all our video content over there as well, on the go, such as recaps and interviews. And I think that's all that's left for us to say now is bye. Bye Bye-bye.